Ever wondered how the Tor browser keeps you anonymous, letting you browse without leaving a trace? In this video, let's break down how anonymous browsing actually works through something called onion routing. But first, let's understand how regular browsing works. Let's say a user wants to visit a website, youtube.com. The browser does not know its IP address initially, so it asks a DNS server. The DNS server checks its database and returns the IP address. The browser then connects to that IP and loads the website. Simple, right? But here's the catch. Your internet service provider or ISP can see exactly where your request is going and the website you visit like YouTube can also see where the request came from, your IP address. So even though you are browsing from your room, you are not really anonymous. Now Onion Routing or TOR was developed to make this process anonymous and here's how it works. When you open the Tor browser, it first connects to the Tor network. This network randomly selects three routers called nodes from thousands across the globe. Then a secure connection is established where encryption keys are exchanged between the browser and each of these three nodes using a sophisticated cryptographic protocol. Each node gets its own unique encryption key and the browser holds all three. To make this easier to follow, we will represent each key and node with special colors in the animation. So let's say the user wants to visit a website. The browser prepares the request but instead of sending it directly, it encrypts it in layers like an onion. First it encrypts the data using the green key which corresponds to the exit node, the last stop in the Tor network. Then it wraps that in another layer using the red key for the middle node. And finally, it encrypts the whole thing one more time using the blue key for the entry node. Now the browser sends this multi-layered encrypted data to the entry node. From ISP's perspective, all it sees is that the user is talking to some Tor entry node. It has no idea what the request is or where it's ultimately headed. Now the entry node, the blue node only knows two things the identity of the user's browser and where to forward the message next, which is the middle node, the red one. Using its key, it decrypts just the outermost layer, revealing instruction to pass the data along to the red node. The red node in turn knows only about the previous node, the blue one, and the next node, the green one. It has no idea where the request originally came from or where it's ultimately going. It simply peels off its layer of encryption using its own key then forwards the request to the next node, the green node, also known as the exit node. At last, the exit node, the green one, uses its key to peel off the final layer of encryption, revealing the actual query. Now, while this node knows what the request is, it has no idea where it came from. The user's identity remains hidden. From here, the exit node acts just like a normal browser. It contacts the local DNS server fetches the website's IP and sends the request to the actual server. Once the website responds, the return journey begins, this time in reverse and with encryption added at each step. First, the green exit node encrypts the response using its own key. Then it sends this encrypted data to the middle node, the red one. The red node takes that, wraps again using its own red key and sends it to the entry node, the blue one. The entry node adds one final layer of encryption using the blue key and sends it back to the user's browser. Now the browser begins peeling off these layers, first the blue, then the red and finally the green until the original response from the website is revealed. And just like that, the user gets the data without anyone along the way knowing both who they are and what they accessed. And that's the magic of onion routing and how anonymous browsing really works. Keep in mind, because of all the encryption and data forwarding in the Tor network, the whole process becomes significantly slower than normal browsing. Now let's actually see this in action using the Tor browser. First, we launch the browser and click connect to establish a secure connection to the Tor network. Alright, it's connected. Now let's search for any website, let's say youtube.com. As the browser starts routing the request, let's take a look at the connection path. Our entry node is in the Netherlands. 
The middle node is in France and the exit node is again in the Netherlands. So what does this mean? Well, YouTube only sees the exit node's IP, not your real IP. And your ISP? It only sees that you are talking to the entry node. It has no clue where the request is ultimately going. Now, the big question is, is this truly 100% anonymous? And the answer is no. No matter what system you use, total anonymity can never be guaranteed. You can get very close like 99% with strong techniques like TOR, but there is always some theoretical risk. Remember those three nodes? Those nodes are chosen from a global network of thousands. All of them are publicly listed and anyone can volunteer to run one. So, in a worst case scenario, a highly capable attacker could secretly control both the entry and exit nodes, while the chances of randomly selecting both of their nodes in a single circuit are extremely low, it's not impossible. And if that happens, they might analyze the timing and volume of requests entering and leaving the network. With enough correlation, they could potentially trace activity back to the source. But make no mistake, this kind of attack requires massive resources. We are talking about intelligence agencies and state level actors here. And even then, the chances of a successful trace are still quite low. And that's all for this video. In the next video, we will discuss how Onion websites work. And we will also discuss Deep and Dark Web.